and a friendly man, a brotherly person, brotherly person. I, I was with my mother going out the door after my father held court <laughs> in his house and dismissed me. And my mother was hurt, and he told me too, when, before he gave the sentence, the final words of the sentence, he told me, he said, you know you won't be able to have any, come here or have any contact with your mother. He didn't say your father. He said, your mother, daddy knows how to get to a child, you know, want to get to one of his children. So I said, yes, I said, yes, sir. So my mother, she walks with me to the door. I wouldn't, I didn't, nobody escorted me out. They knew I was not one that make any trouble or make any, uh, create a problem. So I didn't have any no guns. There was, there was the security people there, but they didn't go with me. They didn't follow me to the door. I was gonna go by myself. My mother followed me to the door. I stepped out of the door. That one little step, stepped down there at the door. She held the door open and she said, son, why don't you go back there and tell your father you accept what he wants you to accept? I said, mama, I can't do that. I said, Ma, what did Mr. Farrar, what did, you, did he tell you he was? I said, did he tell you he was God? And her face changed and became very solemn and, and quiet. Not peaceful, strained, but solemn and quiet. And she said to me, well, no. She said, he told us profit was too big a title for him. I, first time I had ever heard that. I knew he put profit on, he allowed them to put profit on the lessons and called him profit that be for on, or profit for on, for on. I knew that he had, and I thought it was from him. She said, no, she said, he said profit was too big a title for him. Then, okay, now I'm hurt and a bit angered. I was. I just tell you the truth. I was hurt and a bit angered that she would insist and they would insist that I call the man God, the man who said prophet is too big a title for him. So I told him, I told my mother, I said, Mama, I said, how can you want me to call to accept him as God? And you say he said prophet is too big a title for him. And she just looked very strange and uh, or helpless to comment or to tell me anything. And uh, I left her, her heart painting and mine painting. Her heart painting because the son was leaving, son that she, that she raised to be assistant, an assistant, special assistant of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, her husband. And my heart was painting because my mother was hurt and there was nothing I could do about it. I had to go. Uh, and I shared it with you so you will know that Mr. Farrar, you say, well, did your father lie? No, he didn't lie. Mr. Farrar was one of those strange mystics belonging to secret orders in Islam. Strange mystics belonging to secret order than the song. They create a situation to create an effect that will open up the way for the, for the real work to come in time. And they created it, they create something that's against the end result. It ain't for the end result except as an influence and as a situation to put people in put people in, 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 in near the Quran. And their belief is this, that if you have good intentions and you keep insisting upon what is right, you can preach what is wrong, terribly wrong. But uh, the people motivated by 
by is the spirit of righteousness and the spirit of respect for God, etc., no matter how they perceive God. They will keep their good nature, most of them. They'll keep their good spirit, most of them. And if they ever seriously decide to read the Quran, they will be guided by God. And the Quran will save them and put them on the right path. That's their belief, secret order. He was from what is called Pakistan now. It wasn't called Pakistan when he came. It was called India. It was before 1947. Pakistan before 1947 did not exist, not as a political uh, landscape we call Pakistan, or as a government we call Pakistan. It did not exist. So uh, uh, I'm saying to you that yes, he created something that was not Islam, something that was farther from Islam than Judaism and Christianity, and farther from Islam than a lot of other religions that you don't even associate with the idea that's in these three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But it was magnetism, as he called it. It was a magnetism to hold us until we learn better. And there are many things that I'm going to share with you later in written form. But right now, I'm giving you this. He said, and these are his words, speaking to the students, he called himself the teacher, and often I, I, I gave female gender to this teacher, not masculine gender to the teacher. Says she, don't tell her, don't give her your complaints. She knows all about, she knows all about you. Referring to himself as a teacher. Um, uh, yes, and he said, you, to be successful, you must learn to put your mathematical theology in the proper terms. That was the key. And he said, I have 17 million keys. Or oh, he's speaking of this in the, in the third person, to his third, third person. He said he, he has thir 17 million keys. And he said that the population of African American people, or the blacks at that time, was 17 million. And he said he has, the teacher, has 17 million keys. That means one, for, and he said, one for every one of you. So his interest was not just in having some African Americans, his interest was the, 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 good, the good end for all African Americans. Now here we are, we are members, we are African Americans. And some of us, we run the, our little dollar shop inside our walls of our places that we own or rent like it's just for a few of us. Not even interested in, in getting in increasing the numbers. Bringing it to more people. To more of your own kind who are still slaves. Believe me, still slaves. But not slaves to a white master on a plantation down south, but slaves to the influences of Satan in this society in America. Slaves to those influences and can't get out of poverty, held down just like the slave was held down, serving, serving the master influences, and can't progress, can't get your life together, can't make your community a community. I mean your general community, not the Uma, not the Muslim community. You can't make your neighborhood community a success. The neighborhood depends on others, not us. Right, right. For its material existence, for its material future, right. for its moral existence, for its moral future. That's all evident. I don't have to discuss this with you. All that what I'm saying is evident, clearly evident. <clears throat> so you shouldn't be uh, uh, like you are. You should, you should be looking at what has come to us 
And you should be, be, be seeing that the one that started us on this road intended for all African Americans to benefit. Yes. Yes, now, I'm not telling you to go past our Qurans to them. That ain't, what, that ain't what got you up off your feet. That ain't what put Imam Dada Deen Muhammad on his feet. No, it's not. You say, oh, yes, I thought the Quran. You, you, no, I studied hard. The first thing I studied was W.D. Farad, because I was told I would be a helper to my father. First thing I studied was him and his language. Next thing I studied was what I saw connected. What I saw was connected to it. I saw that he had to come from somewhere, so I studied mythology. I studied even the mythology of his own land. The Indians, the Indians. I studied Asian mythology, Indian mythology, Hindu mythology. I studied it. I studied some African mythology. I studied world mythology. And I studied the mythology that's ruling in the life of American people. It's a myth that's ruling our lives here in America, those that don't have the light. It ain't the truth. It ain't the open truth. Myth holds truth. It's locked up in myth. But myth is ruling our life, not light. Not the light of guidance from God. So I studied these things. And, and, and uh, at the same time, because I could read the Quran somewhat in Arabic, and I was reading it for guidance, not, not the Bible for sure, but I started to read the Bible too. Some told me, read the Bible. So I started reading the Bible, I was reading the Quran, I was reading all of this. So this, this uh, didn't come to me because the Quran was, was in my hand. What I have, 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 have uh, been led to see came to me because God guided me to, to several things, not one. And then they came together. And I start to understand. And start to see where we should go. Then I appreciated the Quran even more. When I studied the Quran, I could see more, more, more clearly the depth in, in Quranic scripture, the great depth that's there. And there was darkness upon the deep. And the spirit moved upon the face of the wall. God said, let there be light. Huh? That's the Bible Genesis, the opening for the Bible Genesis. <clears throat> so that's how it came. That's how it came. God has been with me from day one till now. Allah, the Most High Creator, has been with me from day one. And Allah showed me all these things with His guidance. And, and uh, I uh, now don't feel comfortable with some of you not seeing the great work of Mr. W.D. Fawdy. Yeah? You have to see his great work and you have to accept it from me if you can't see it. If you can't see it, trust me and accept what I tell you about him. He was an humble person, just like I am. Wanted no praise of popularity just like just like I am huh I'm telling you what he is and uh, Allah blessed him to be successful in working an ancient strategy it was no new strategy the strategy he uses an ancient strategy of the saintly people they put you in prison so and then give you tools to work yourself out a prison so you can be free for the first time they find you slave a slave with, with flattery flatter your worth flatter your power flatter your ego and you, you you've been put down so they know that you love it feels good to be praised you know so they fix they, they fix it up for you and it holds you, it's magnetism. It holds you, magnetic power. It holds you uh, and, uh, and uh, creates a, an environment, a language environment 
that strains your mental muscles. And, and by straining the mental muscles, the mental muscles become stronger. When the mental muscles become stronger, you become more intelligent. Oh, yes. And Farad knew this ancient strategy. And the New Testament used it. It didn't come with Jesus Christ. It wasn't the first time. But in the New Testament, it said of Jesus that he will tread the wine press alone. Huh? He will tread the wine press alone. Farad took up the same idea. He tread the wine press alone. And what the wine press? Squeeze, press. You stand on the grapes. In, the ancient, in medieval times, in ancient times, they stand on the grapes. They put the grapes in, a, in, a, in an enclosure, uh, wood, and seal it so no juice can come out. And then the, the people get in the, in, the, in the vat, or whatever you call it, and they walk up and down on the grapes. I hope, I hope they wash their feet, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little yeast, foot yeast, help the formation, be a bit of the formation or something, I don't know. It's a little humor to a little humor to us right now. Yeah. I will press, I will tread the wine press alone. So what is it? Your spirit. He know, they know how to work your spirit. That was, that was clear. At least you thought it was clear. It was clear in, this, in the world you were in, it was clear for you. But then they press, they press upon it and show you things that open your heart and mind to understanding that your soul has been thirsting for all your life. And generations before you, the soul of your fathers and mothers was, 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 was thirsting for it. So when it comes to you, you love it so much. And they put, they put that that is like, uh, like the yeast that's out of an animal stomach. You know, they get yeast from a lamb stomach, or from an animal stomach, yeast. And the, the yeast, the yeast calls it the formate, formate, get sour. Or they put other things for, for wine, and for wine there's other things. Um, but it, the yeast comes from the animal, from the animal. So this, uh, this is unlawful to give the people something from animal in the bread that they're going to eat or in the wine. I'll give them something that forms, that makes spoil the wine, the grape juice. It's, 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 not, it's unlawful. But they do the unlawful thing <clears throat> and you drink it and you get happy. You start feeling good. And you start, oh, whoa, the world start looking better to you. Your, your existence starts feeling better to you. you. Get that little wine in you, you know. See, I shall press, he says that he shall press, the, uh, thread the wine press alone, alone. That's what Mr. Farad did. That's what Mr. Farad did. And he knew those ancient teachings. He knew God had blessed him to see. He had a mother who raised him for his work. A very devoted mother, very spiritual, highly spiritual woman who loved the Quran and the prophets so much, so dearly. And she would tell him to recite certain passages. She said, recite them all day long. And she told him to say the Salat Ibrahimiyya over and over again, recite it all day long. And power came to that man. And that man came to us, not directly. First thing he did was go to his own people, who were over here as indentured servants, Indians from Asia. Working over here in this part of the world as indentured service, he established himself as a master and a liberator for them. And then he came to us. And he came to us in around 1930 or 1931. He came to us for two reasons. He wanted to uh, uh, expose Western rule, white supremacy, Western rule in the life of non whites. He wanted to expose it, and he wanted also to create an influence that will guide innocent people to the Quran in hopes that Allah will bless his work, and that would be a great community or a strong community of believers in the Quran and the true Islam one day in these Americas. 
He was influenced, I know, by his resentment, the, resent, the resentment of his people of India who resented being dominated by uh, Britain or the, or, or the, uh, the English who took over their country and ruled in their country for some time. He resented that very much. Mahatma Gandhi was a very peace, peaceful man even in his strategy and oratory. Very peaceful man, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi is the leader, the peace uh, preaching leader, passive resistance and all that, who worked to make the Indian land for the, uh, come in back into the hand of the Indians and get the British out. Mahatma Gandhi, may he have peace in paradise. Mr. Farrar, unseen man, very, very, very um, humble and man that didn't want the stage, he didn't want the public stage, an unseen man saw what was happening to us after, after knowing what would happen to members of his uh, people who came to America as indentured servants. But then he saw what was happening to us in the ghetto. And he decided that he was going to work to free us from the same man. I, I'll give you his language. The common enemy. The common enemy. He saw white West and powers as the enemy of Asians. And then he came here and he saw as, them as the enemy of, of the blacks or the African Americans here in America. And he decided that he was going to work against them. And Allah must have been with him. And he used Mr. Farad as a tool of divine intervention. Yes? And we should not forget him. We should honor him and thank Allah for him. Yes? Honor him and thank Allah for him. Uh, and pray that he is in paradise. He passed some years ago. We pray that he is in paradise. Um, and I will share with you, God willing, a lot of his powerful insights. Because we can benefit greatly from them. Greatly from them. Yes. <clears throat> uh, that's uh, one side of the what I wanted to present to you at this particular time. Um, now, the other side of him is what he gave us from the Quran to help destroy what was ruling in our minds before of religion, our religious knowledge. Uh, and to protect us from what he had established to break, to break the grip of the Western world and Christianity on us. What did, he, what did he give us? He gave us a prayer. The ministers of the nation of Islam, when they opened up the, teaching, the, the temple, the teaching, they used to say, surely I've turned myself to thee, O Allah, trying to be upright to him who originated the heavens and earth. And they recited to the end. That also came from Abraham. It's not because of that Abraham, but that came from Abraham. He is the one. And he and said, uh, and I am of the Muslims, huh? They finished, and I am of the Muslims. He is called, Abraham is called the first of the Muslims. The first of the Muslims. Uh, not in nature, but the first of the Muslims in conscience. Not in nature, in conscience. He's called the first of the Muslims, Abraham. So we were given that, Mr. Farad gave us that. So now, uh, if, if you're really clear-headed, and you are not 
fascinated by the strong wine of the black man being gone, you will start to have some problem. But you say, well, what do you mean? What are we saying here in our prayer? That we turn ourselves to the originator of the heavens and earth. When we were told that Mr. Farad was a distant son, was just a son of God, huh? That his father was God, and this inherited. The son becomes a God after the father. So if we weren't told that Mr. Farad was an originator, he wasn't an originator. He was a God that had just been born a little while ago, 1877. That's the birthday was given to us for that God, Mr. Farrar, right? 1877, you, some of you remember it. Don't pretend you don't. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself, not fooling me. Yeah, so, so, um, uh, yes. So the originator of the heavens and earth, he's telling, he's telling us the truth, while also giving us falsehood. Right? Yes. Telling you the truth while at the same time giving you falsehood. With the belief that truth will outlive falsehood. Wow. That's the belief of the saints. Truth will outlive falsehood. Alright? And, and he also said, Oh Allah, bless Muhammad. As you bless it. and the followers of Muhammad, as well. the ministers would lead us in that prayer to the end, huh? Surely thou art praised and magnified. Would lead us to that prayer in, in, in uh, reciting that prayer till we reach the end of it. So these these uh, facts should be given to you again for you to look at more more seriously and look into more deeply to know that the nation of Islam was a language model, a language model for containing black people who were rejected and put down and mistreated until that model as an incubator produced a new mind in those people. A mighty strategy that worked. The proof of it is myself and many of you that are with me and you wouldn't leave me if they put a gun to your head and you know it was about to go on. I know it because that's the same way I'm attached to you. <laughs> no, no threat can, 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 can separate us from what we have or separate us from one another. I wanted to share that with you, but much more is coming. The Ramadan session, oh boy, I'm looking at it. I already see it, I'm looking at it. Woo! But there's enough energy and light there to create a, a new galaxy. Allah be with you. I love you very much, my people. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who you were, but I looked back, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh...